Hello, welcome to Let's Learn C++ Lesson 1.2. Today I'm going to teach you about basic output in the standard namespace. Now obviously, excuse me, output is going to be an integral part of programming. Can you imagine a game where there is no form of text on the screen to tell you what to do? In fact, you would be playing the game blind on a black screen. You, you wouldn't know what the heck you're doing. Your character would just be moving around. Obviously, this is very important. So, we're going to learn it. Learning on a console output is really, really, really simple. Um, it's just a, just a matter of one command. Now, if you get into other things like graphics or anything, uh, then obviously output will become a little more complicated. But, um, in lesson 1.0, you saw the basic output command in the Hello World application. Uh, let me just open up that application for you. Oh, by the way, rejoice, I don't, I don't have any vocab for you. <laughs> anyway, this, this program should look very familiar to you because you saw it in exact copy in Lesson 1.0. Now, then I didn't explain what using namespace STD was. I'm still not going to explain it in great detail. I'm just going to tell you why we use uh, the standard namespace. Now, I want you to see what happens when I comment out using namespace std and we don't use it. You can see I get an error on cout, I get an error on endl, and I get an error on cin. If we hover over it, it says identifier cout is undefined, identifier endl is undefined, identifier cin is undefined. That is because those functions are stored inside the standard namespace and we're not using the standard namespace anymore so it doesn't have them. Now Using namespace std means we're going to use the entire standard namespace, not just pieces of it. We're going to use the whole thing. So, if if I don't want to use the whole thing and I just want to draw, I, I just want to pick and choose what I want. There are two ways to do that. I can do it. I, I can pick and choose them one time, or I can pick and choose them every time I need them. So, if I'm going to do it every time I need them, then I would just do standard colon colon c out. And you can see that the error went away. So this means that I'm drawing the cout function from the standard namespace. It's kind of like a first name, last name deal. The first name is standard, and the second name is cout. Or, no, rather, flip that. The first name is cout, and the last name would be standard. Now I can do that with endl also, and also with cn. So this tells me that I'm using the standard cout, and the standard endl, and the standard cn. Now, what if I don't want to, like, what if I'm playing a text output game or something, or some kind of program where C out and C in are used all the time. I don't want to put standard colon colon all the time, I, but I still don't want to use the entire namespace. I can draw them out one by one by saying using standard C out, using standard and L, using standard C, C in. You can see that my errors went away and I can still use them now. So. Still the first name, last name deal, first name C out, last name standard. We're just we're just covering the entire program with three lines rather than doing it each time we use it. But still the easiest method is to do this. There are reasons why you would do it individually. Um, normally I do it individually just so I can save that little bit of whatever uh, for later on in the program. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, this is perfectly fine. The uh, the amount of memory that including the entire namespace takes up is very negligible. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and include the whole thing. So the basic output command here is C out, and this stands for console out, not not sout, not count. It's C out. So C out less than less than. This is called the left. Uh, binary shift operator. Don't even worry about what that means. Just know that you have C out and then double left, uh, double less than. And the way to remember this is whenever you're using C out, the less than signs point out of the program. So to the left is out. They point outside of the program. So then we have C out less than less than. Then we have our text in here. We have hello world with quotation marks around it. I think I showed you this earlier. If you take the quotation marks off, we have errors. Identifier hello is undefined, expected a semicolon. So anything in between the uh, 
the quotation marks is what's going to be output. So I'm actually going to change this. I can change it. Tyler is awesome. Tyler is an awesome person. So this is Tyler is awesome. Tyler is an awesome person. And then we have another double less another double less than pointing out of the program. And then we have our end L, which will end the line and go to the next one. And we end with a semicolon. So run this real quick. I'm going to show you something. You can see we have Tyler is awesome, Tyler is an awesome person. It's all on the same line. Well, what if I want to put it on a separate line? There are um, multiple ways of doing this. I can do C out, Tyler is an awesome person, and then take this out. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and reformat this to be lowercase. There you go. Tyler is awesome, Tyler is an awesome person on separate lines. So we output this at the uh, first line, and then we end L, go to the next line, and output the second one, and end L again. So this is going to display the first one on top, second one on the bottom. There's another way we can do this. We can keep it all in the same C out statement. First of all, we can do Tyler is awesome, put an end L, and then continue it on. Tyler is an awesome person. Ugh. And then end L again. So end L doesn't necessarily have to be the end of a C out statement. It can simply be used to end the line. Now, this takes up a lot of space. It takes a lot of characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve characters, including the spaces. So what if I want to keep it all kind of short? I can do this. Take out the end L, take out both of these to where they're still on the same thing again. And then I can put backslash in. Backslash in is, is what we call an escape code. And there are other uh, escape codes as well, but uh, slash in means new line. So it's going to do Tyler is awesome, new line, Tyler is an awesome person. It's just the same thing as an end L, but it's part of the string, and it takes up a lot less space. So you can see this in action right here. You see it works perfectly. It skips down the next line. I just thought that that was rather important to do. Now watch this. Here's another escape code. Slash in, slash t. So slash in is going to put it on the next line, and then slash t is going to tab it over. So you can see it went down a line and then tabbed over. So that's just two of the escape codes. There are other ones, and I'll show you those in a later lesson, but I just wanted to go ahead and show you those right now because they can be pretty useful for formatting and I figured you'd want to know them at an early time so you can get to know them and start using them. Um, anyway, that is all I have for you right now in this lesson. I will get back with you in 1.3. I think that one is about integers and basic input. So I'll show you how to get input from the user. Look forward to seeing you guys again. Thank you for tuning in.